the word kingdom and king, you know, are not in Ghana's chieftaincy laws and regulations. Because to be a king means to be the head of a kingdom. And to have a kingdom means you have a king who has got his own parliament, who has got his own uh, judiciary, and has an executive under him, yeah. and the people of the country are subject to him without question. Okay. With this, maybe you will remember some of the Islamic countries like Saudi Arabia, Dubai, yes, yes. and others. Okay. You know, we don't have that in Ghana. And that is why the word kingdom and kin, as I said, are missing okay. so from our laws. Okay, so that's saying is not a king. Properly speaking, he's not a king. Okay. Because that's Antihine is subject to Parliament of Ghana, oh. the courts, whatever, as opposed to King Charles yes. of England, England, and I mean Queen Elizabeth's son. Yes, yes. You know that over there, he is the king of England. England. And Parliament would make laws for him to sign before they would become laws properly so called. Okay. And then also over there, he would uh, take salutes on ceremonial occasions. Indeed, he is the head of state of the United Kingdom. Okay. The Santehine is not the head of state of Ghana. Okay. And his powers do not go beyond the frontiers of the Asante people okay. no okay. so he's not a king okay. if anybody says that the doma stool you know existed long before the asante stool uh, i believe that it is not easy to accept it it is not correct okay. uh, and if it is possible for me to explain Yes, yes, yes. It's possible for me to explain. I would say that, you see, the Ashantis were living together with the Doma people. You know, the Doma people were living at a place called Suntreso, around Kumasi. And then the, Ashant the today Ashanti people were also living at some miles away, about 10, 20 miles away within the uh, Bekwai Esumbenya Kokofu area. Then the Ashantis moved downwards, uh, upwards. They moved upwards to the area where the Domas were staying. The Domas were staying with the Kwabre people, the Tafo and Amakum people. And then the Ashantis sought permission from the Tafo Hine called Kwasi Dompo, and they came to stay there. Within a short time, they started spreading out. So definitely, war would break out. And it was during the time of Obili Yabua, the fourth Asantehine, you know, that this war broke out. And the Doma people defeated the Ashantis. Oh, okay. Then at that time, the Asantehine's nephew called Osei Tutu had left uh, Denchira, where, where he was more or less like a sword bearer, and escaped to Akwemu. So upon the death of his uncle, he was informed that he had been chosen as the next ruler of Asante, so he should quickly return. When he was coming, he had about 700 uh, soldiers given to him by Ansasa Seku, the Akwemu Yene. And then with the wisdom of Okonfo Anoche, we are told that because the Akwemus were directly trading with the Accra people and the dense, they acquired weapons from Accra and that put, they gave them an edge over whoever they were going to meet in their enclave. So they got there and as soon as he had been placed on the stool, he decided to take vengeance on the Doma people. He rooted them completely and killed their chief called Kusi. So these people left and went far away to the present day Ivory Coast and settled at a place called Awusu. Over there, the chiefs 
asked them, why have you left your land to come? And they explained the war that had made them to cross over to that place. And they said, if you have killed your chief, and the Ashantis too have killed your chief, then you don't have any problem, you should go back. They decided not to go back. So they gave them a new land, and the land was called Jamai. That is, people who have deserted their land and come here. So that was where they settled, called German. And then a few of them decided not to join their brothers in the new area. And they stayed at where we have Doma today. And others too, who decided to stay back among the Ashanti people, they founded uh, towns like Odumase and then uh, uh, Brekum mm. and a few others. And then Ashanti, you know, say to two, gave them an overlord called um, called Chiremesikafu. So the, all those people are Domes? They are, are Doma people. Oh. And then a town called Boma oh. in Ahafu, still under Doma. Oh. But when they left to Jamai, they gave Ashanti a hell of problems. In fact, the next king of Ashanti, after Seotitu, called Opokuwari, had to fight them to subdue them. Then another chief of Ashanti, who ruled from 1799 to 1824, Osei Bonshu, also fought them. In fact, the Doma people, that's the German people, they made the golden stool for themselves. And at that time, their chief was called Edinkra, uh, yes, Edinkra Kekeri, Koja Edinkra Kekeri. And the war took 15 months before the Ashantis could win. I mean, they killed Edinkra Kekeri and took the golden stool from him. So it was only when Ashanti was subdued by the British that they left the uh, Doma or German people. The Quran says the truth is only one. Yeah. The truth is that of all the states in Ghana, it was only the Ashantis who properly so-called formed a kingdom. And at a certain point in the life of the empire, Ashanti could raise an army of 60,000 soldiers instantly. They could raise an army of 60,000 soldiers so they could fight anybody at all. If there was something that brought them down, it was simply because of superior weapons, you know, brought in by the British people. That was what was able to defeat Ashanti. But you can't say that meeting them on the battlefield, anybody would dare fight, and for that matter, defeat Ashanti. And even then, before the British could fight Ashanti, we are told that they will raise an army from northern Nigeria, Gambia, Syria, Europe, and the entire Gold Coast, before you could march to Kumasi to fight the Ashanti people. So when a state is like this, and then a chief is a super paramount chief, then you have to give recognition to him. But there is something which the Santehine does, which other chiefs cannot do, except about four other minor states that we see in the past also had some of the features of the Ashanti people, more or less like a kingdom. One of them is the Nanumba. The Nanumba na. One of them is the Yana, that is the uh, Dagomba king. One of them is the Gonja king, and then the Mampusi. These four, they also exercise some powers like in the north in, uh, among their people, just as the Ashanti. So today, they are also called overlords, just as the Ashanti. Okay. Now, to be an overlord in Ghana, some of the characteristics we see in you is this one. Even though you are, as I've already stated, even though that person or entity is a paramount chief, all right, he has paramount chiefs under him. And it is only these five I have mentioned, Ashanti in the south, among the Akans, and the four in the north, who have these powers, or who have, who have got functions like this, that they, they have paramount chiefs under them. And why do I say functions? Functions because he exercises control over paramount, paramount chiefs. Okay. But as we sit here, the Domahine does not exercise any power over any paramount okay. chief in the country. Okay. And not only the Domahine, no other paramount chief has power over other paramount chiefs. 
Can I continue? Okay, so I, I just wanted to clarify. So, um, so I, um, in a nutshell, are you saying that the Asantehene has similar powers to the Nayere, to the um, Yana? Are you Are saying that? Yeah. You see, when you say that Asantehene has similar powers, yeah. it is like he is copying them. No, he no. has greater power. They rather have similar powers as his. Not the same. His is very high. Yeah, so Higher than they, they have kind of... They are placed at the same say, status, yes. but the what that Santehini's own is more conspicuous okay. because he came from a broken nation, so he's more recognized. Okay, you understand. Okay, so are uh, the calls for the Yana and the Nayere to be added to the constitution justified? Because Don't they say constitution. Seen. We're talking about the law, the the law, the, law, the, the, the chieftaincy regulations. Yes, yeah, are yes. uh, calls for them to be added to the chieftaincy regulations? Are they justified, like the Santehini? Yes. Uh, that is why I'm saying that they are like living in the shadows of their Santayene. It will never be justified to put them in the same category. And if, uh, as you allow me to explain, okay. you will see that the name as Santayene there covers the rest and it will be enough. Okay. Apart from he being on top of paramount cheese, he also has power to and stool paramount chiefs. He also has power to distool paramount chiefs. And below the paramount chiefs, he goes to the level of divisional students and odikros in Ashanti. Okay. And his influence is there. Okay. And these others exercise a few of those powers. Okay. Now, in the case of all others in the country, in the case of all other paramount chiefs in the country, the position of the law is that they are put there by kingmakers and every stool has got its own kingmakers and it is only the kingmaker, it is only the kingmakers who can instool a particular chief and distool a particular chief? Okay. This okay. operates everywhere apart from Ashanti. Okay. In Ashanti, the Ashanti can say okay. this person, as currently you know that somebody wants to be offensive. Okay. Okay. Ashanti Hini says no. Okay. But in other parts of the country, once the person, that candidate, has been introduced by the Queen Mother and they have got their king makers. There is no power above the person that can say yes or no. And there is no power above the kingmakers that can dispute that. In Ashanti, it is a different ball game altogether. Right. That is why we give him that singular recognition. Right. Ashantis originally were not called Ashantis. And when you say Ashanti, it's just the anglicization of the name Asante. You know, at first, there was no state called Asante. Okay. The Ashantis were just small groups of people found in the southern part of the present day Ashanti. And because of where they were located, you know, they, they were, the dancers were on top of them, and then the dangerous, and then the Achim people. And the southern part called Amansia. That is southern part where where the Ashanti people were. Mm -hmm. So initially they were called the Amansia people. Okay. Then because of so many wars which enslaved them, mm -hmm. you know, and perpetually held them in bondage, many of these families started coming together mm -hmm. to protect themselves against their enemies. Mm -hmm. So in the three word we say Asante Yankambu, Asante, Asante. So it became Asante. Oh, okay. You know. Then after, so let's say that after 1896, when Ashanti had completely been destroyed, okay. you know, the Confederacy broke down, and they were asked not to enslave anybody and not also to have any tributary state. So the Doma people, and any time you mention Doma, mention German as well, had their freedom. Then in 1935, when Prempe was brought back, the 
Ashanti Confederacy was re-established and because of indirect rule, Ashanti was placed together as one region, the western part being the Bono part, they were under one region. So they were given one recognition and because of easy administration, the colonial masters gave instruction to the Ashanti and to everybody. So for the Ashantis, Doma was under them to the extent that the white man had made them to be to recognize the Asante Hine. Mm -hmm. So any time the Asante Hine sits in state, all the paramount chiefs under him would come, including the Doma Hine. Mm -hmm. So that is the interpretation that we were part of them until 1959, okay. when Ashanti was split into two and Ashanti West became Brahafu region and they had their freedom. And in every house, you have house of chiefs. But the Doma people would also interpret that it was just because of a confederacy we were part. And being a confederacy didn't mean that we were under you. Oh, okay. And I've just explained yeah. that the confederacy was just a loose association of people. And after independence, everybody went away. Oh, okay. That is the story. Oh, OK, OK, OK. So the, 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 so the Otufo actually didn't, um, um, let's say, um, uplift the um, the Domas to paramount status. That didn't happen. No, it was not the tomb for that. Uh, 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 did that? No, it yeah. wasn't the tomb for. Okay. You see, it's like every state that was part of the Confederacy yeah. was a paramount. Okay. So to start with, Doma was a paramount. Okay. But because you were part of the Confederacy, you set the golden stool. Okay. So it means you were under the Ashantis. Okay. Yes, whether you like it or not, because in those days we had one Ashanti uh, territory. Okay. You understand? Okay. Uh, Ashanti state. And you were part of the Ashanti state. Okay. So you can say that there was somebody in Ashanti who was not under the golden stool. But out of pride, definitely I would say that, yes, even if I was conquered, I, had, I, I was only a state within that entity. Then they too will tell you that to the extent that you didn't have complete freedom and you were part of the entity, okay. then it means you served us. That, that is just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. 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 And so Ashantini would not need to appeal anybody. They were already paramount. It was not a divisional stool oh, okay. that was made up. It was already a state of Iso okay. that was defeated by Ashanti. Okay. Just as offense, offense was a state of Iso. That was defeated by Ashanti and became part of the Ashanti system. Yeah. So if, for example, uh, Ofenso had become part of Bono Ahafu, it would not be easy to say they were not part of Ashanti. They were. Okay. At a certain point, you served them. Okay. But there, at no point in time in history had Ashanti ever served uh, oh, no. the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the Doma Bono. people. Okay. No. Okay. 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 So, these Ashanti people came together not necessarily giving their freedom to the Asante Hine, but it is like something that could always help them to have a common unity to ward away the enemy. So when you go to Asante, we have states, a mine like Jabe, Ejeso, Bekwai, Ofenso, Mampon, Insuta, Kuntanase, Manso, Nkwanta, uh, go so name them Kenya, say Bompata. All of them were states. independent states okay. came together under uh, Okonfanochi and Osei Tutu that made the golden stool for them. Golden stool not for anybody, but for all of them to see it as their symbol of their strength and unity. Okay. So, for as long as you are fighting to protect the golden stool you are protecting the sanctity of Ashanti unity. And they place the Kumasi Hine on top of all of them because without somebody to whom you would have a common allegiance, it will be difficult for you to say you are united. And we say they place him up because even he himself does not sit on the golden stool. Anytime that Ashanti Hine sits in state, you see the golden stool also sits in another Stool okay. as a separate entity, and Asante Hine serves the golden stool. Everybody serves the 
golden stool. And that is the beginning of the Asante Confederacy. That's kind of, that's the, the nation was a confederacy and still a confederacy. So the Asante Hine did not have direct powers over anybody. But he derived his powers from the golden stool. Okay. And everybody was to owe allegiance to the golden stool. Okay. So it means that when you go to Ashanti, the states I mentioned, and even more, are independent Amai. One is Oman, independent Amai plural, independent states. All of them have been paramount chiefs as their heads. Just as when you go to Achim Ebuakwa, you have the Ochein Hene. As the paramount chief of Achim Ebuakwa, we have a paramount chief of Achim Bosome, paramount chief of Asim Kotoku, paramount chief of Doma, you understand? Yes. Paramount chief of Sekendi, paramount chief of Esikado, yes. paramount chief of Sehiri also. In the case of Ashante or Fenso, all of them, they have Paramount Chiefs, Mampong, uh, Jesu Jabi, all the states are mentioned. More than, for almost 60 something, they all have Paramount Chiefs. Then on top is the Asante Hine, who is their overlord. And they all, all owe allegiance to him through the Golden Stool. So such a person cannot be classified as an ordinary Paramount Chief because he exercises the powers of a super paramount chief. Okay. And our law is not able to define the position of the Asante Hindi. Mm -hmm.